Great, thank you so much. And uh, of course, uh, thank you for your service. Always appreciate thank you, that. thank you, thank you. Um, t tell me about, did, did your time in the Army, how much did it help you as a fighter? Tell me about your service and, and did it contribute to your boxing career? Uh, it absolutely did. I mean, without the military, I wouldn't have wanted gold medal or anything. I mean, you know, it's it's so hard out here for for all the civilian fighters out here to, to make the Olympic team and, and everything because they don't have the facility, they don't have the money for the gloves and shoes. They got to buy all that stuff and everything. In the Army, we had everything. Army paid for everything. We had a great program and everything. So without the military, I, like I said, I was in the military for two years before I even put a pair of gloves on. So. It's a good program, and uh, without the military, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you, man. I mean, like I said, they taught me everything. I was being all I can be. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the feeling of winning the gold medal. Um, you know, obviously you, you had the honor to represent your country in uniform, but you also did it in the Olympics. Just talk about what that meant to you. I mean, it, it, was, it was great, especially being in the military. And, and represent my country that way and in the Olympics. And I mean, it, it was the best feeling that I've ever had in my life to this day, you know, other than my, my kids being born. Uh, that, was, that was great. And I don't think there'd be anything else to top that. You guys had fun in the Olympic team, um, uh, but I do remember the, the controversial loss with Roy Jones. Did you have any worries that something like that could happen to you being in, you know, in Seoul? Well, you know, I, we was always worried about it, but I fought like on the Saturday. I fought the day before Roy Jones, so um, we always knew it can happen. And I fought a, I fought a Korean too, and I had to just knock him out because it, you know that's what you had to do. And Roy Jones, he fought the next day, so you know they got him on on that day. And that's by the way, that's the, that's the worst rip off I've ever seen in my life. I mean, Roy Jones beat that dude every which way but loose. And their whole world knows it. So Roy Jones, in my heart, is a gold medalist. Of course, your teammate was Riddick Bo. Yeah. What do you remember about Riddick? And, and uh, did you spar with Riddick? Like, what was the relationship like with Riddick Bo? Oh, it was, it was great, man. It was like, you know, I, I grew up with four sisters. I never had any brothers. And he was, he was like the closest brother that, that I had. And uh, we both like to talk trash. And he likes to talk more trash than anything. Believe me, if you know Riddick Bo, then you know that's him. Uh, we, we had a great relationship, man. We, we sparred each other. You know, we didn't try to kill each other or anything like that. I did beat his butt on his birthday. I woke up. We woke up. We had a spar one day, you know, uh, at Fort Huachuca and with the, uh, the Olympic team. And I said, Bo, the day your birthday? He said, yeah. I said, I'm going to whoop your butt today. And I did. And he, that's one thing that he will admit, that, that, that I did that on um, that day. So we had a lot of fun with Riddick, man. If you got Riddick in your camp, it's going to be great. He's got a lot of jokes and everything. He talks like Ray, Ronald Reagan and everything. <laughs> Were you guys roommates at all? Did you guys room together? Yeah, we was roommates. Yeah. We was roommates over in the Olympics. And, uh, you know, it was great. It was great. Did it motivate you, like, rooming with him? You're both striving for kind of like the same thing? Uh, well, I was basically, I didn't really need anybody to motivate me. But, you know, it was good being with him. And he did motivate me in a way that he was national champion and he was boxing way longer before me and people knew him. He was already like a household name. So yeah, yeah. it did it did help. And then just one other guy from that time, the gentleman you beat, also from New York City, Michael Bank. Uh, he was talking about a guy who was everybody knew, everyone kind Yeah. Of, everyone almost kind of wrote his <laughs> name into the Olympics. Right? He was almost, they, when I went to the Olympics, man, they were asking me, are you Michael Bent? They was asking me. I, I, I swear to God, they was over there. They, everybody was looking for Michael Ben. They said, "Are you Michael Ben?" I said, "No, I'm not. I'm Ray Mercer. Nobody ever heard of me. Don't nobody know how I look or anything." So that that helped too. So yeah, yeah. they thought I was Michael Ben, but well, I wasn't. Did, uh, and, what, and what did you think of Michael as a fighter? I know you. Oh, uh, he was a great fighter, and 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 they they told me when I first left Germany to come uh, to the camp, the All Army camp, and I had to fight him. They told me I had to worry about him to make the limit team. I would have to go. Through go through him. But I wasn't worried about that. I was in the Army training because I, I didn't know him. And I never seen him fight or anything like that. So, yo, I went up there and I did what I did what I always do when I first sparred with him and then he ain't like that. Then the next day I got him and then we fought twice and I beat him. You know, when you got somebody's number, you just got their number. But Michael Bent is a great guy. I talk to him all the time. Um, he was he was part of motivation too. I didn't know him but you hear about him and all that stuff and then you, you start to worry a little bit. But 
Oh, he's a great guy. We still talk and everything and all that. Did, did, you, um, did you ever fight uh, Felix Savone, the Cuban? I did. I did. Oh, man, I did fight him, man. I was, what was he like? I mean, because he's like, you hear all this stuff, but it's, you never see him because you don't see the Cubans at all. Yeah, I know, I know, man. I fought him not knowing who he was, too, and, you know, and... Uh, I, I thought I'd beat him. I mean, he, that's my first, he gave me my first stand and eight count, which I, I thought was bullshit anyway. But, yeah, I fought him. I thought I'd beat him. F it, but he, he was a tough dude. And everyone talked about his, like, legendary right hand, right? That, that, that right yeah. hand. But, yeah. uh, but what, did, you, did, you, did you feel his right hand? Or? The, uh, the stand and eight count, yeah. when he gave me stand and eight count. Yeah. I think that was a good right hand there. Yeah, yeah I might have tasted it then. Yeah. A lot, of, there was a lot of talk about those Cubans, like like Savone and like Teofilo Stevenson, the great Cuban. Before yeah. Him. Everyone said, oh, they come and they be great pros and this and that. How do you think he would have done as a pro? Uh, I think he would have done pretty good. Um, you know, all depending on what training he has. You know, uh, like our, all our good trainers are done that off or training overseas fighters and all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. I think I think he would have did great. I think you did good. So you think he had a he had potential? To yeah, come? yeah, he did, he did. Sequence uh, the, the three straight fights that I remember was, was uh, Cooper, Damiani, and then Tommy Morrison were just phenomenal fights. You win all three. Yeah. Um, uh, just talk about that time in your life, like just that that role you were on there. Like that must have been an incredible ride. It was, man. It, you know, it was something new to me and and my family. You know. Um, my wife, it was it was it was a great journey, man. And every fighter training thing was different. Uh, um, did you mention Bert Cooper? I did, yeah, yeah. Bert Cooper is the reason that fight was so hard because we were sparring partners for like three three years, and uh, we knew each other. Yeah. And we was both after the fight, we both. I had a jaw like this. They called me Disney Gillespie because I had to bust. He busted a blood vessel in my jaw. And it got big. From the first round, it was like that. I had to fight that guy for 12 rounds right. like that. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was a hurtful fight, man. But we were both getting stitched up at the emergency room. He was on this gurney, and I was over here in the same room getting stitched up together. I'm just, and the only thing that saved me is I think I just, because I won the fight. Because yeah. that was a hell of a fight, man. And then I went home, and the next day, my wife had to take me to the, to the doctor because I was dehydrated. And they kept me in the hospital for two days after that fight. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a tough one for me, man. I tell everybody now, don't fight those sparring partners. I don't care what. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they get to know a little too much about you, right? Yeah, I'm telling you. And then you know, you know him. And it just makes for a tough fight. It's gonna it's gonna be a tough fight, like Larry Holmes and Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Uh, look what happens. Okay. It happens. Okay. Um, then the Damiani fight, you win the title. Uh, now, did you did you? He also had a big amateur background. Did you were you familiar with him? No. You, no. I was not familiar with him at all. So, and you knock him out. I remember, I remember seeing the knockout in my mind. Still, what was that moment like for you? It was, it was, it was, it was great, man. It was because I know that I just just one thing that always settles that the old trainers tell you. It only takes one punch to win a fight to knock somebody out. One punch, and I had that moment where I needed that punch. And I counted on it, and I threw it, and it landed, and he, it was over. I, was, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't. I couldn't. And then with uh, Tommy Morrison, that was my first and only title defense. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think it was a pretty good one. He, we, we, we knew he was going to get tired because he was on oil-based steroids, and uh, we thought he was going to give out in five, but he gave out in three. <laughs> so that, that was good. So that the fourth round came, that was it. And every, every time I was going back to the corner, my trainer was like, what are you doing? Because I was covering up, just letting him hit me, trying to get tired and all that. You seen where he hit me with some good shots? Yeah. That was the best one, but he never hurt me. But, you know, it just, it, it was, I, cause I, I didn't see everything coming. But that thing he threw right there, that should have hurt, but it didn't hurt. Yeah. And I was like, yo, hey. And his people said when he threw that and hit me with that and I didn't do nothing, they were like, uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah. It was going to be like that. So it was just, just went to work on him, man. Hit him, what, 16 straight punches? I remember the cover of Ring Magazine. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Twisted up like that. That was that was amazing. It was amazing. Every fighter should have a a photo like that. Yeah, <laughs> that was that's a great photo. Yeah, and um, you know, Tommy Morrison had a lot of hype behind him. He was in the Rocky movies and stuff. And what did you what did you make of him coming into the fight? 
Well, I knew he was going to be, because I beat him in the amateurs, too. Okay. You know, I beat him before, the, the, the go for the trials, I beat him. So I didn't really think anything. I thought, I'd, he, you know, he'd get in there and he'd work. Uh, I knew he was way better than he was when I fought him with his amateur, and, and, and he became a technician, and uh, we knew we knew that. So we really trained hard for him, but then I changed up two days before the fight when my, when my friend told me that all I had to do was get him tired. I went into just get him tired mode, and it, and it worked. And my trainers were going crazy. They was like, what are, you, what are you doing? Why are you letting them hit you like that and everything, you know? But that was part of the plan that I made. I wouldn't suggest anybody give up. Uh, what was it? Nine months of training, nine weeks of training, uh, just to get a guy tired. <laughs> you know, but I did it, and it worked, and it turned out to be the best photo that you can ever have of hitting somebody. Jimmy Fort Holmes, an all-time great. Just uh, talk about the fight with Larry. Uh, uh, Larry was my idol. I was supposed to fight, actually, to defend my, my WBO title. They wanted me to fight Michael Moore. But I didn't want to fight Michael Moore. I wanted to fight my legend. My, you know, I wanted to fight the legend. I wanted to fight Larry Holmes. And I really thought I could beat Larry Holmes, and I could have. But, you know, he was, Larry was old. When you get old, you start using different tricks. Yeah. He was grabbing the ropes, throwing, doing that, then talking to his wife. I, I tell him every time I see him, his wife helped him win. Cause he was, he was talking to his wife and that freaked me out a little bit, you know what I'm saying? It did freak me out. And then my trainers told me something too. They said, in the beginning they was like, Larry Holmes, oh, don't go in there thinking that you're gonna just, he gonna, you gonna knock him out, you know? They had me toughed up for that. And then, two weeks before the fight, they're gonna switch up and say, he shouldn't be standing in front of you. If he's standing in front of you three rounds, he shouldn't be. You know, so when he was there after three rounds, you know, in the head, I thought Lehman was crazy in the head, but hey, I was, at that time, you know, he got me too, so. They, they played with my head fighting him, so I always say that him, he couldn't have beat me by himself. But with his wife, he beat me. <laughs> I put it that way. You talk about the Holyfield fight and what was it like fighting the man Holyfield? Oh, it was, it was great fighting. And, and believe me, he's a great fighter. Um, he's, a, he's a great fighter. It was great fighting Holyfield. I, I really had to get in shape and lose a lot of weight. I got down to 228 to fight uh, Holyfield, so I was in pretty good shape fighting him. And I thought up to the se seventh round I was doing pretty good that I was ahead. Uh, but then I took a knee because he hit me with something. And I, we was always taught in the Army, when you get hit with something and you, don't, you lose your marbles a little bit, take a knee and recoup. And that's what I did. And when I was down and with a knee, the motherfucker hit me in the back of the head. And so he's, when they say he's a dirty fighter, he's a dirty fighter. But I thought, but ever since that point, when I took a knee, I moved, I started moving backwards, and I think that's why I lost the fight, because I, I made him the aggressor when I was aggressive for seven rounds. So I think I did great against, against him. I thought I, I won uh, seven out of, out of ten, though. I really thought I won that fight. And uh, what about Lennox also? You know, I thought I, I knew I won that fight with Lennox Lewis, you know. They had him set up to fight Tyson. Politics do play a part in boxing, believe me, but they had him set up already to fight Tyson and everything, so that's why he got that. He got a gift. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of Tyson, uh, he was the one guy you didn't fight. Was there ever any talks about you guys? That's, they were building me up to fight Tyson. I was all in Ring Magazine and everything. And, and then when, when we watched Buster Douglas, I almost cried that night. So they were building me up. When he knocked uh, Mike Tyson out, I was almost crying, man, watching that. Because I was set up to fight him. And so, the, so that was it. That, that was it. I was supposed to fight him one other time, went to Sweden, and he seen this one guy hit me, and he see my legs buck a little bit, so he told me on the plane, he told my people not to sign any contracts, that they're going to send me one. He sent me one, signed it, sent it back. Nothing. Wow. Nothing. Linus Lewis took him to court to get the fight. Really? Yeah, and I was out. I was out. Wow. I was out. That was my chance right there to really, you know. Yeah. And you, but you had the fight on paper, you had it. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad. That hurt. That hurt right there. Yeah. Ray, what's your proudest moment in the ring? All, all, all the things you've accomplished, what's your proudest moment in the ring? You know, the people, man. The people that you're entertaining and the people that, that love you and everything. And that's, that's the biggest thing that I get out of boxing, man. That's why, you know, I try to sign every autograph and everything for people. And, you know, coming here... Being invited to the International Brother Hall of Fame is it. If you're here, you, you're, you're a top-level fighter, yeah. you know. I would love to get, get inducted one day. Yeah, 
Sure. If, if it don't happen, I just congratulate everybody that is. My friend Michael Moore and my train, my Olympic coach, Kenny Adams, is getting inducted, and that is very special to me. So this is a good time to be here.